Hello everybody, I'm your host Wheel Trouble. Let's kick things off right today by having you hit like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends. Today, I want to address one major barrier into motorcycling, and that's bad dealers. I'll be honest, most of my experiences with dealers have been quite pleasant. If a local dealer treats me well, like my money means something to them, I'm going to be loyal. This video is more of a warning shot to dealers who may be making big mistakes, instead of a video to newbies. The advice to somebody who's dealing with a bad dealer is pretty simple. Find another dealer. On that end, the problem's solved. That doesn't really help the sport grow, though. Accessibility plays a major role in sales as well. If a BMW dealer doesn't exist in my hometown, I'm exponentially less likely to have a BMW motorcycle. Actually, that was a real factor that helped me decide on the Versus X rather than the G310GS. Let's say the local Yamaha shop was a jerk to me, and they're the only ones in my town. Then it seems I'd be far less likely to ride altogether. I've trolled the web to find the most common complaints of dealers that people have. Most of this is anecdotal, but so are the reviews that people leave on dealers' Google listings. I'm throwing these out in no particular order, and I'm going to try and be a bit rapid-fire with these. Problem number one, lack of follow-up from the salesman. If you're in a business selling expensive products, the least you could do is ask the customer if you can still take their money, right? Be polite about it, and make sure your gestures are invited. If a person called you for a part, odds are they need that part to keep going. Problem number two, service appointments are way too far out. I get it, you're busy. Even so, I want to ride now. At $100 plus an hour, it's not unreasonable for the customer to expect expediency. If you can't get to it, I'm going to go to somebody who can, no offense. Labor is almost pure profit for a store, so it would be a good area to invest in. Having said that, I've tried to hire people too, and I'll admit, it's not easy. I've seen shops outsource certain routine jobs, maybe your shop should consider that as an option. If you own a shop, and you've got a buddy who's a killer at fork rebuilds, maybe let him do the job after hours as a private contractor. The third item on this list is lack of knowledge. I personally don't fault the dealer for this. There's a rather daunting number of motorcycles on the market, and even within one brand, there's usually at least a dozen different products. The dirt bikes, the sport bikes, the dual sports, the jet skis, the side-by-sides, you get the idea. As nice as it is to find a dealer who knows everything about everything motorized, it's not very realistic. If you find a dealer who isn't afraid to check the manual, consider that a good sign. Next on my list is a couple different complaints all rolled into one big one. Prices are high and wages haven't kept up with inflation. This is just a fact. Get over it. Motorcycles are a luxury item, and because people need to make their dollars stretch farther, the fact that the customer is willing to come into your store is nothing short of a small miracle. I realize that MSRP is what it is. But then we've got all the hidden crap. We've got the dock fees. We've got tag and title. We've got assembly fees. It's easy to spend an extra grand on all these stupid hidden fees. And guess what? That's a lot of money to surprise somebody with. Either be open about these fees or find a way to reduce them, please. Take the assembly fee. Was the customer given an option to assemble it themselves? Seems kind of a dick move. You wouldn't sell the bike if it wasn't assembled. There's also the high labor rates. Good mechanics are expensive, and I appreciate that you will give me a discount if I buy the part through you but doubling the rate when I don't get a set of tires from you will cause me to shop around completely, and then you lose me. I've had a dealer go from $30 for a change, uh, per tire of course, to $60 per tire. Hell's bells, at that rate I just learned to do it myself and bought the tools. I get that I just threw a lose-lose at you dealers, but that's a balancing act that you need to figure out. I'll have suggestions in a later complaint. And here's that later complaint. Don't blame customers or insult them for commenting on your business choices. Don't do it. Ever. Replying on Google reviews is the single most dangerous thing that I've seen businesses do. Sometimes it can save the day, but most of the time it's just going to tank your business even further. Customer complains you're closed on a Monday. Customer didn't make Sunday Monday the default dealer weekend. They're used to weekends being calendar weekends. That's Saturday Sunday, for the rest of you who weren't familiar. The Sunday Monday thing was your call as a dealer. That doesn't mean you need to change it, but when a customer complains on Google that you lost their business due to your hours, that's entirely on you. Own it. Don't toss it back at the customer and go, well, we want family time too. Yes, that was actually a real response from a real dealer. Instead, be polite and watch your words. Maybe in the case of the hours, just politely explain that the industry standard for motorcycle dealerships has evolved to be Tuesday through Saturday due to a variety of factors. Apologize for the misunderstanding, because that's what it was. The customer isn't expected to know that Sunday is race day and Monday is fix what I broke day. Also along that line, don't ever insult the customer. If you've got a staff member going off the rails calling customers the n-word, promote that staff member to customer. 
If you are the owner and you're guilty of this, I don't expect you'll be in business very long. There have been plenty of times when I've had to call the cops to escort hecklers away from my place of business. The best thing you can do is keep a cool head and keep your frustrations within the scope of your business. It doesn't matter what the heckler calls you. Keep all retorts to yourself and just professionally state why you are refusing to take their money. My biggest pet peeve with dealers is lack of stock. While I will be the first to admit that I do not shop at my local dealer who does have the largest in stock inventory, that was due to the issue we just finished covering specifically insulting me due to the job held by my family member. All the other shops in town only carry a modest supply. This makes shopping for parts and gear completely dismal from the consumer standpoint. I understand that, as a dealer, you cannot afford to stock a wide variety of gear that goes out of fashion in a year or two and has such a narrow profit margin. Here's a truism, though, that many physical box stores are slowly realizing. If you have to order it, the customer will save you the trouble, and order it through whichever online retailer gives them the best deal cutting you out entirely. This effectively means that your small profit margin turned into no profit at all. Walmart has literally lost thousands of dollars from me alone because of this harsh reality. If I'm spending hundreds of dollars on boots, I expect to be able to try them on before committing to the sale. Same for helmets and a myriad of other gear. Amazon lets me do this, but more than a few local dealers will not. See the earlier feedback regarding blaming customers for your business practices for further clarification on why this is moronic. Personally, I'll still go out of my way to purchase from local dealerships as a show of appreciation. Remember folks, without the dealers, our sport would die. Support your local motorcycle shops whenever possible. Last major item I found has me somewhat perplexed, but I will also admit to having encountered it before. We all have bad days, yet there is something specifically terrifying when the guy spinning wrenches at the local dealership is having them. I've had bolts come out completely over-torqued very badly. And I've read horror stories about dealers improperly doing brake jobs or improperly mounting tires. There really isn't much that needs said about this. If it's happening, it's bad. Just own up to it if your shop did this and make it right with the customer who was impacted. Fortunately, every shop that I've done business with that had one of these bad days didn't balk about making it right. And good on them for that. Anyway, that just about covers everything I found worth mentioning. I hope that if you're a dealer, you found this feedback useful. Dealers, I would like to turn the tables. What would you like some new writers to know about how you operate? Leave some comments below, and I may throw some of them into a video. You can support me on Patreon, the link's below. Like, subscribe, and share this video with all of your friends. See you next time. Wheel Trouble out.